Welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome to the full reaction to what we've just seen. Because we were waiting for a message. We were waiting for a statement heading into this game. And I cannot stress enough how high pressure this was. How much pressure was on Xavi, on these players, to get a result today. Because if we'd have started the season there, going in at halftime as we did, looking like maybe this was going to be more drop points... The pressure would have been out of control. We would have heard so many voices from the outside trying to tear us down. But here we are. Our season takes flight. It starts right here because we've got the win. And not only have we got it, but what a win. Four goals in our favour. Three coming in the second half. And Sufati came on, changed the game entirely. And Robert Lewandowski doing what he does best on his birthday. With two fantastic goals, we're going to be talking all about the game and what this means to all of us Barca fans. So sit back, relax and enjoy, because this one, it was special. And I do have to say, guys, when the lineup came out there ahead of the game, I thought it was really intriguing from Xavi to see some of the changes and also the kind of setup that we were seeing tonight. Because obviously, Alejandro Balde came in at left back. That was a huge call there that Xavi had to make, dropping Jordi Alba from the lineup. You also had there Frankie de Jong playing in the Busquets role there as the single pivot. We didn't really know whether it was going to be a Rao again at right back. Was it going to be three at the back? Was Dembele and Balde there going to be? Wing backs in this system and also Ferran Torres straight into the starting lineup. That was a massive, massive surprise to me, I've got to say. But what a start it was. Well, what a first minute of the game that it was to Barca because we turned the ball over. Real Sociedad were coming forward. We managed to get the ball. Pedri, phenomenal quick feet again today. He was so, so special in that midfield. He plays it into Balde and he didn't hesitate. He had all of that open space ahead of him and he just accelerated into it there. Exploding into all of that open room. He waits for the right moment. He doesn't panic. You know, he doesn't just get rid of the ball straight away. He waits and waits and waits, makes his way up the field before then putting the ball into a dangerous area and that is what Robert Lewandowski does. You put that ball in that position, he'll score and he will do it on many, many occasions. They're arriving in the right place at the right time and that's bread and butter for him. He will finish those off all day long on his 34th birthday today but this guy is nowhere near done yet. He is only getting started. But of course, just five minutes later, it was not ideal for us Barcelona fans because just when we were thinking, this is brilliant, you know, this is fantastic, we're going to blow Real Sociedad away, we got a quick reality check because Franco de Jong was caught on the ball here in a very dangerous area, you've got to say, and I did see it on social media there, you can afford to lose the ball, you know, when you're an interior or maybe even when you're playing in a double pivot, when there's players around you to protect you, but when you're that single pivot, You've got to get that right. You can't afford to lose a ball there. That's too dangerous. You leave yourself way open as a team there, and it hurt us because one ball then goes in behind. I thought Eric Garcia was going to get there for the tackle, and he does, but it then deflects onto Isaac and over Ter Stegen. It's quite an unfortunate goal there for Barca. Obviously not ideal for Frankie de Jong and Sociedad level on the score sheet. And tonight, wearing the captain's armband was indeed Marc-Andre Ter Stegen. And I really thought again, he rose to this occasion, just like he did in the opening game against Rio, with key saves at key times, he did the same here. Because in that first half, there was two moments there, one from Mikel Marino, he's wide open, you can see here, Barca's defensive shape, what was really going on there, what was the plan? Because down that side, so much room there for Marino, gets his shot away, but Ter Stegen can parry it away. But what about this one? This was a crucial time in the game here. To pull that out the bag, he's changing direction. He's got to go back across goal. Fingertip saved it and I, David Silva. Brilliant stop from Ter Stegen. And he, along with the attacking players, along with all of the goal scorers, he, for me again, deserves some real, real credit. But at halftime, make absolutely no mistake about it. 
The pressure was on, and I'm looking there at Xavi, thinking, okay, it's one all. You have got work to do here at halftime, because in the first half, there was dysfunctional play, there was players there weren't really adding a lot to the game once again, and we were sort of in a similar situation to what we were against Raya, where you're looking for that winner, you're wondering where it's going to come from, and it was interesting that Xavi also didn't panic into any early sub, he didn't make any changes all at halftime, he let things progress, let the game go on, Real Sociedad had a goal disallowed, but on the hour mark, there was a change that absolutely changed this game. 66 minutes there, and Sufati came on, along with Rafinha, Ferran Torres, and Alejandro Balde going off. Now, both of those players who came on, enormous impact. Rafinha had a hand in every single second half goal that we scored, and he deserves enormous credit for that impact. But what about Ansu? What about this young man who was also very encouraging against Raya? Really, really promising that he was. He was probably disappointed that he wasn't put in from the start in this game. But did he show that? Oh, no, he didn't. He came on and sent out his message loud and clear. Because already then, Rafinha whips a ball into Ansu Fati, who has taken up a similar sort of central position there, just in behind Robert Lewandowski. And then, what a flick that is. Back heel there into Ousmane Dembele, releasing him into all of that room. And you've got to give credit to Dembele too. That is a really good composed finish. Those were the kind of finishes that we were seeing in preseason. That was the kind of Dembele there from that kind of range, putting it away, no questions asked, really, really key goal, but Ansu was just fantastic for me, he was so elusive in his play, he was receiving balls, he was confident, he was moving well, he was linking the play there with those out wide, and also Lewandowski in the midfield, everything was revolving around him, and what about this moment here, where again Rafinha is involved, Ansu Fati receives the ball, lays it off there to Pedri, Pedri then looking to return it to Ansu, the ball in the end comes off of Ansu in the area, and what I was saying earlier about Lewandowski, it happens again. If there's a loose ball bouncing around, bobbling inside the area, he'll gobble that up. He will eat those for breakfast. Lewandowski coming in, buries it. What a goal. What a moment for Barca. That is our third 3-1 it was. And we weren't done there yet, because what we had to see was Ansu get a goal of his own. That's what we're all sitting at home thinking, okay, either we want Lewandowski's hat-trick, or we want Ansu to get his goal. And he did just that. And this time, it was the roles reversed. Again, Rafinha involved in the build-up play. He puts another similar kind of ball into Lewandowski this time, who almost had a look at Ansu's assist and thought, oh, that looked quite nice. I might try that myself. And he gets a really incredible touch on it. The technique there again involved is fantastic into Ansu Fati and just like with Lewandowski it's clinical it's composed it is absolute magic and I'm so happy for him we all know about the misfortune we all know about the bad luck that he's had with injuries what this young man has had to go through it is absolutely heartbreaking it has been to watch it but to see him come on today to show again the quality that he has the potential that this young man possesses he is amazing, he is talented, and at his best, when he is fit, we know what he can do, we know what he can be. And tonight, him, Lewandowski, Rafinha coming on, Dembele scoring, these are our attacking options, these are the players that Xavi can turn to and say, go on then, you go and prove your point, you go and change the game, and Real Sociedad couldn't handle that, that was the key today, there came a point in the game whereby it could have gone either way, but we were able to make changes, we were able to just put players in different areas to pose different questions, and they could not respond, they couldn't live with Barca today, and this is a special win for us, this is a really important moment in our season, in the plan that we have, in of course, the project that we're seeing under Xavi, it was vital we won today, it was absolutely huge to get these three points, and in the way that we did, silencing critics, silencing those who want to bring us down, but to score four, away at Real Sociedad, and to navigate our way through what was a very, very tricky game, Please, guys, do let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. What did you think today of the performance, both in the first half and the second half there? The goals that we scored, the impact of those coming off the bench, and also the decisions made by Chabby today. Of course, we're going to be talking much, much more about what we've seen and what we can expect now in these weeks going forward. These are encouraging signs. These are the kind of signs that we wanted. And the message and the statement we sent out 
is that we are ready. We are here, and our season is now underway. Let me know those thoughts. I will see you soon. But until next time, as always, Vishka, the Elbasa. Uh -huh.